fans, are you ready to brave the wild? With me, your host, Paladino Joey, or Joey Awajan, Brave the Wild is available on all your favorite podcasting apps, and I hope everything is going okay with that on Apple Podcasts. Apparently, there was a duplicate, but uh, we'll likely ha- have that all fixed up here. It looks like I think everything is good to go. Thank you for downloading and listening to this show. It is a great pleasure to be back on board with you once again today. If I didn't say my name, I am Joey Awajan or Paladino Joey. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. It's the annual Brave the Wild Thanksgiving Spectacular. Okay, maybe it's not spectacular, but it's fun. It's nice to be back talking hockey again on a hopefully regular basis. <laughs> As, yeah, the cleanups were shut down for a week. Now, maybe it's going to be like 50 degrees and sunny. I guess maybe the uh, the uh, snow is going to melt and it is in the process of doing that. And, um, yeah, we'll be out doing that again. I don't know how long, though. So, hopefully, most likely, we'll be back on Thursdays again like we like to do here at Brave the Wild, or should I say I. Brave the Wild is a part of the Hockey Podcast Network, also known as THPM. We thank DraftKings for being affiliated with us oh so very much, and I thank Dylan and Kyle for being a part of things. Also, shout out to Dylan Richardson for helping me out getting into the account and everything to try to move things around, get the uh, RSS feed hooked up properly. Basically, I had to kind of get in the account, basically, and he was able to let me do that so I could uh, add the RSS feed. So hopefully things are coming to where they need to be rather than having duplicate uh, <laughs> duplicate podcast feeds on Apple Podcasts. It was just Apple, but you know how Apple can be a very pain in the ass about everything. So luckily, uh, I believe everything's okay. Hopefully you're able to get this on Apple Podcasts and all that good stuff, and you're not seeing a duplicate uh, feed anymore. Sorry for babbling about that. Only three games to preview since I, or to review and preview since I did that little catch-up show last week. Glad I did that. Even though sometimes it's fun to get caught up on Thanksgiving as well. But uh, again, let's get going. Pittsburgh Penguins, Carolina Hurricanes, three days off, then Winnipeg Jets. We're going to preview Toronto, Arizona, and Edmonton coming up as we head into the month of December. I already got the tree up. Unfortunately, it's not a real tree, but it looks nice and all that, and it doesn't have the built-in lights anymore. That's the mistake I made in the past, is having built-in lights, because if the lights start to go out, it's a piece of junk. In this case, if the lights start to go out, you just buy another $5 box of lights. Simple. Simple. (laughs) And then the tree can last for a decade or God knows how long. Um, Anyhow, let's get to where we need to be. Pittsburgh Penguins, the Minnesota Wild beat pretty badly, of course. I was all like, oh, Mark andre Fleury's going to go up against his former team. No, no, he's not. He's injured with an upper body injury. I'm not sure exactly. Maybe it's some kind of contusion or something. Contusion, as people say. Uh, Ryan Hartman, of course, still out. And unfortunately, it sounds like last night to Brandon DeHame, at least out on the fr- uh, for the Friday game. We'll talk about that in segment number two a bit. Toronto, Toronto coming up. Minnesota Wild get pounded 6-4. to four. Derek Gustafson, I kept calling, I called him Derek again. That would be Philip Gustafson. Derek Gustafson, formerly, uh, former Minnesota Wild draft pick years ago out of Portland, Oregon area. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Unfortunately, he never made it to the NHL. Uh, sounds like uh, Derek Felska's <clears throat> wife was a fan, so that's kind of cool. Drew Larrickson Eck and Brandon DeHaim continue to play well. Speaking of Brandon DeHaim, he returns, scores a goal, I really like what I see out of Brandon DeHaim. I really do. Uh, Marco Rossi, just a whole lot of nothing, unfortunately. At this point, what is it, 16 games now with just that single assist? It's a doggone shame because, you know, a lot of us were super excited about him. Sorry for the background noise. Super excited about him coming into, you know, obviously the organization. And obviously looks super promising, but so far hasn't adjusted well to the National Hockey League, unfortunately. Um... And, of course, we'll talk about Tyson uh, Jost uh, as well on his way out. Marco Rossi, yep. 16 games. He's been scratched three times now with Una assists. Just one, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> guys like Jules Erickson, I continue to play well. A couple of goals. He was 50% at the face-off circle. He's certainly gotten better there. He's one of the better face-off guys in Minnesota now, which is really nice. Matt Dumba, after getting <laughs> getting yet another James Shepard Memorial last week. And I'm not trying to pick on him. I'm not. But um, actually, a pretty good week this week. He scored a goal versus the Pittsburgh Penguins, unfortunately, in kind of garbage time, but it still counts, right? Brandon DeHaim, again, did score, which is great. Jules and that couple goals. So there's your four goals. 
Philip Gustafson had five goals against officially in that empty netter, unfortunately. The Wild only mustered 23 shots on goal. It was kind of like, Pittsburgh looked kind of like Pittsburgh again, even though they haven't been playing all that great. What did they just get to 500 with the win here? In, uh, well, in Pittsburgh, not in XL Energy. No, this is in XL Energy. We're wearing those beautiful uh, green uniforms. Oh. <laughs> the only thing that's out of place is the Wild logo. That's the funny part. You just need the classic N star and you're good to go. The classic old North Star logo and you're all set. Um, I was surprised to hear some people saying they don't like the North Star green. They'd rather be with uh, the Christmas colors. I like Christmas colors just fine. And I love Christmas and I do like the Christmas colors and all that. I think it looks nice. But, I mean, I'm sorry. After looking at these uniforms, I would do a rebrand in a heartbeat if I had a choice. If I had any say on it, I would do it in a heartbeat. But, I, I don't know. I love them. I mean, it's just, oh, I look at those jerseys and I'm just like, mm-hmm. and I've heard also people absolutely love the breezers. Me too, because that's what it's all about. The stars on the, uh, the three stars on the breezers on each side. Freaking awesome. And those are like basically for those of you wondering what breezers are, just in case you're new to hockey, is those the shorts type, the shorts part of the uniform, you could say. Yeah, I don't know. Apologize if I'm being weird here. But not a very good game. Uh, Gustafson, not all that great. Obviously, nice to see the Wilds scoring goals, but then giving up six. The defense wasn't where it needed to be, and the goaltending was not up to par. Kind of like the early part of the season where both Gustafson and uh, Mark Andre Fleury were. Not good, but again, the play in front of them wasn't all that good either. I love the Pittsburgh uniforms as well, so State of Hoppy, in case you're listening, Scott, locally, in the southern suburbs <laughs> here. Um, uh, it looked like the Stanley Cup final. It just looked, I mean, it was a perfect timing for this. It looked like the Stanley Cup finals and Tom Barrasso there, number 35, Yarmor Yager, you know, all, you know, Mario Lemieux, Kevin Stevens, Mark Reck. Oh my God. Just look up the 91 Penguins, say Hockey Database, which I recommend more than... Uh, Elite Prospects is better for, like, Euro players. You, you get more stats. But there are so many freaking ads on Elite Prospects, you can't even open the freaking page without your computer basically, like, uh, you know, <laughs> exploding. It's like, okay, please. You know, it's nice to have ads and everything, but my goodness. I'd almost be tempted to, like, go ahead, get rid of the... It, in, in order to have an ad-free version, maybe I pay five bucks a month or something, I would be willing to do that. <laughs> it might be a little better, but otherwise, no. I mean, Hockey Database are my friends, and I appreciate them so very much. They're following Brave the Wild on Twitter, which is like the biggest honor ever. So it just randomly happened one day. So major shout-out to them forever and ever and ever and ever. Um, but yeah, look it up on Hockey Database, and you're just like blown away. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> they were that good? It's a yes, they were. Um, of course, I uh, don't know how to spell some of these guys' names. There we go. <laughs> Mark Recchi. I try to spell it correctly, but then it's like, nope, I didn't because I'm dumb. Yager is pretty easy to spell, so I'll go with that. 91 Penguins, and you're just, again, blown away with how much talent was on that team. Even guys like Joe Collin, 94 points. Paul Coffey, defenseman, 70, uh, or excuse me, 93 points. Kevin Stevens, Yarmar Yager. Lemieux missed a ton of time, but he was like two points a game. He was like a 160-point guy. He was insane. Uh, Joe Mullen is an old legend. He was with the uh, Calgary Flames before and won the Stanley Cup there. Trottier won with the, uh, uh, I believe he won with, yeah, he won with the Islanders, right? Yeah, there's no mistake in that mustache. He wasn't with... Uh, <laughs> he wasn't with the Calgary Flames. Sorry, I'm kind of going off into memory lane into classic hockey and all that right now. So, I apologize. Yeah, Ron Francis. Good God. Oh, yeah, and, and my favorite trade of all time, Larry Murphy for uh, Jim Johnson. You know? You know Jim Johnson? Ever heard of him? Yeah, Larry Murphy. Ever heard of him? That's all I gotta say. I'll, I'll leave it at that. It's just uh, one of the worst trades in the history of hockey. And the North Stars lost that one pretty bad. And he won the Stanley Cup and we didn't, that kind of thing. Sorry, I just had to go down their memory lane. Looking at these two colors skating against each other at the same time. It looked like, see, because back then, the home team wore the white jerseys. And, uh, yeah, the Penguins beat us. I guess this case, the home team did wear the white jerseys, right? This was in Pittsburgh. Um, yeah, my God. Just, ugh, the memories are insane. Um, these jerseys are a little bit older than what the North Stars wore that year, but it still has the same feel. And mm, so that's why I had to go down memory lane. Let's move on. I apologize. 
that kind of, mm. <laughs> I apologize. Um, Carolina Hurricanes, much better. Philip Gustafson, absolutely solid in the net and good, strong play in front. Guys sacrificing their bodies, blocking shots, and fitting when you consider Sam Steele was the best player in the game. You know, third, fourth line guy, but was playing top line and did very well. Uh, scored his third goal of the season and assisted on the <laughs> assisted on the game winner for Alex Galagoski. It's it's his one thousandth and second game, but again they were celebrating Alex Galagoski's one thousandth game with a silver stick and all that, just like we did with you know Koivu years ago, and all the, the honors with him and all that. Um, obviously a wonderful career. I still remember him with the Gophers almost twenty years ago already, which is really kind of crazy that it's been that long. Uh, he came pretty much right after the glory years of the Golden Gophers when they won back-to-back national championships, so slightly younger than the Jordan Leopolds and, and Johnny Poles. That's my generation right there, class of 98 from high school. Um, so a little bit younger, obviously. He's still in his 30s, still able to play, but definitely been scratched a lot, and the emotions on his face after the game, uh, getting the game-winning goal, and of course, this, the you know, the, what he'd been through, not playing, and all that. Uh, it sucks. It sucks not getting to play, but it, it kind of is what it is. There's talk maybe maybe him and Bill Guerin will work something out where he could get traded to play more at some point, but maybe not. Maybe he's okay here. We'll, we'll have to wait and see how he feels, but he was pretty emotional after the game. Not angry, but just kind of, you know, sad, happy, obviously, you know, been through a lot, and then such a wonderful turn of events, scoring the game-winning goal, uh, showing his skating ability, exploding to the net and receiving that pass from Sam Steele to win the game. It was a wonderful feeling. Again, guys sacrificing their bodies and doing such a good job. And only 20 shots on net for Philip Gustafson. Of course, Carolina did pretty much the same thing for uh, the young Kochkov, who was absolutely great the whole game. This, You know, it, it's not fun to watch in terms of, like, there's literally no scoring other than Sebastian Aho very, very early in the game, about midway, th- well, midway through the first period. That's early enough. And then again, lots of blocking shots. And any type of scoring chance seemed to get gobbled up. And of course, both goaltenders were, were pretty solid the entire night. So you felt good about that in the general scheme of things rather than a 6-4 to four demolition derby, which can be fun, but it's frustrating when you come out giving up six goals, five goals, seven goals, you know, that kind of stuff. You feel like crap. It's like, what was that? Yay, we scored four or five, but we lost. That's terrible. That's garbage. <laughs> garbage. It, it is. Um, so this was a nice feeling. And, of course, you get the win and you steal one from a excellent Carolina team that I had winning the Stanley Cup this year, and they still might. But at least the Wild were able to beat them in a regular season game. Maybe we'll meet again much later. We'll see. <laughs> Ooh, Calgary, Pittsburgh, two to one. Interesting. Interesting. And, of course, Calgary lost. That sucks. They have been a huge disappointment. They started off the year so good, and they they wouldn't even make the playoffs right now, if I'm if I'm correct about that. I'm pretty sure they wouldn't even make the playoffs. Isn't that something? Don't think no. Oh no, they now they'd be in. Yeah, they won. They had won a couple of games in a row. That's right. We'd be out. That's nice. Yeah, we would be. <laughs> so how, how did St. Louis catch us? What the heck, man? They've been hot, but again, they lost their most recent game. Come on, Minnesota, step it up. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> Vegas continues to rule the West, but some pretty solid competition, including the Seattle Kraken, third seed in the Western Conference. It is Thanksgiving, Hoppy, as he would often say on the Soda Pod, that uh, once you get to Thanksgiving, uh, there's a you know there's a pretty good idea what kind of season you might be having. And if Seattle's in third place in the Western Conference, ooh. <laughs> Yeah, Seattle's like another Las Vegas Golden Knights right now. They look pretty good. Good for them. Winnipeg Jets, demolition derby for Winnipeg, and nice, solid play in front of Philip Gustafson. So if we're going to play anything like this, yeah, and and if we're going to make the playoffs, we need to have more of these. Games where you're going up against a better team uh, with really good goaltending, tough play, and then you just go all out and finally start scoring. Guys that were in massive droughts, like Matt Boldy, right now... If he was, uh, you know, projected for the rest of the season, even after this three-point game, three-point game, right? Matt Boldy would only get 60 points. Earlier in the season, you thought, oh, wow, he's on his way to 80, right? Down to 60. That's so much of a drought. 
Matt Boldy had been in. And it's like, what's going on? He's like at 11 points, 11 points. He's still at 11 points. He's still at 11. Okay, hello, anybody home? So it was kind of frustrating. Really, ever since November the 1st, Matt Boldy had two points on November the 1st and then had one point on November the 9th and nothing since. Yowzers, man. One point since November the 1st. Since the two-point, you know, solid game against Montreal on the 1st of November. <laughs> Gosh. But then a three-point uh, game, that's much better. Hopefully that's a sign of things to come. And he'd been fairly quiet even earlier. So, I don't know. Come on, Matt. Hopefully he can get back going again. Obviously the chances have been there. Just hadn't been finishing. And, I don't know. It's, it's A lot of guys collectively just weren't scoring goals. You go from... <clears throat> scoring some goals, but getting your butts kicked defensively and bad goaltending and blah, 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 to like, okay, we'll shut them down, but then now we're not scoring either. Come on, man. And then you have a nice old-fashioned butt kicking, 6-1 to one versus Winnipeg, and it's like, all right, all right. <laughs> Obviously, you can't expect this every night, but hey, let, let's roll. Let's, let's hope for the best here. Mason Shaw now six points. He scored his third goal of the season, another one of those gritty goals, and you feel so good. Matt Dumba, another assist, and Nick Patan getting an assist. Nick Patan, one of those guys, used to be, you know, obviously a tough player for the uh, Colorado Avalanche, but kind of in the quad A department. I won't explain it again. I'm probably, you're probably sick of hearing me. Oh, so a quad A player. Okay, I mean, most of you know what that is by now, and I've repeated it too much. Dumba, multi point game. Obviously, he's been significantly better. Raising that trade value. Thank you very much. Hopefully, we can get more than a fifth round pick. And yes, the Minnesota Wild did acquire. Ryan Reeves for a fifth round pick uh, in 2025, right before this game. So Ryan Reeves, this must be the reaction. We got Ryan Reeves. No, now we're ready to kick some ass. You know, <laughs> as the physicality and obviously he's not just there for fighting, but he can obviously he can fight and he can win fights pretty easily. But he brings the physicality to to go along with things. He is 35 years of age, unfortunately. Now, there was talk about the Wild looking for a sixth, uh, uh, excuse me, a uh, top six forward. Well, uh, Ryan Reeves is not a top six forward. He's a fourth liner, especially at age 35. But, well, all right. The only hope is he doesn't eat up somebody's roster spot. Unfortunately, I wouldn't be surprised if Marco Rossi is going to be the guy that's going to be uh, sent to Iowa. I would not be surprised, along with, or, or just scratched. But I think maybe he's better off in Iowa at this point. Just like sending a baseball player down to AAA. He's been struggling. He's batting like 190. He's got one home run and four RBI and like, th- you know, 16, 17 games, like, okay, come on, we can do better. Send him to AAA, hit a couple homers, get that batting average up, that kind of thing. You know? You know that kind of thing. Because <laughs> you know Rossi's probably going to be the leading scorer for uh, the Iowa Wild if he goes down there, or at least the number two guy with the way uh, Sammy Walker's playing. Whew. Um, he's playing very well down there, to be fair. But that's probably what it's going to take. Obviously, again, the other guy who, again, was batting about 100 with like a bunt single basically every five games, <laughs> Tyson Jost, uh, put on waivers, was meant to be sent to the AHL, but obviously you, you run the risk of losing him via waivers, and we did. Two, two million off the books, so I guess that's where this takes place, Ryan Reeves. Two million off the books, for uh, and, and he winds up with the Buffalo Sabres, gets in a, a fight in his first game there, which he never did here, blah, blah, blah. So we'll see. Um, a skilled guy who was unable to play a bottom six role with Minnesota. Just just nothing there. Um, you tried to put him in the top six role and nothing happened. So top six role, he's not scoring. Bottom six role, he's just kind of part of the scenery. So I guess he's a Buffalo Sabre now. Congratulations, uh, Tyson Jones, still in the NHL rather than in the AHL. I'm sure he would have dominated in the AHL. And then you call him back up, and it's the same old story, unfortunately. Another one of those high draft picks, and sometimes it's just not a whole lot happens, or they don't really finally start to get into stride until they're mid to upper 20s, which could be the case. Hopefully that's not the case with Marco Rossi. I doubt it, but something's got to give one of these days. Come on, man. Kalen Addison had been in a little bit of a drought as well. He had uh, eight points for, like, forever. It was beautiful, like, eight points. Cool, he's the third leading scorer. Still at eight points. Still at eight points. Still at eight, you know what I mean? Just one game after another. Not a whole lot happening. Multi-point game. Well, there you go. Kirill the Thrill is for real. That type of thing. Multi-point game. Love it. And he looked a little better as well. Uh, there'd been a big complaint about Zuccarillo Kaprizov. Just kind of like being ghosts out there for 
it's multiple games. There was definitely a frustration there. Like they're they're not really. It's like they're just kind of like they were just kind of coasting. It seemed like that was the major complaint with those guys. Um, but stepped up in a big way. Did Kaprizov for the most part. Not the best game I ever saw, but again, better than before. Another guy who had been a just he was a, a huge factor all year last year, scoring goals. You know, like a. Uh, Ryan Reeves on steroids in a good way, like with, with more offense. That would be <laughs> Marcus Felino, of course. Did so well all last season. And then this year, kind of kind of oft injured, banged up, and like obviously late start to the year or two. And not scoring at all. Like just kind of, just not really a factor. And it was really frustrating. And then yeah, he had a multi-point game. So obviously, and, a, and the recipient of some nice passing, hitting the puck to him. Actually, the rebound, excuse me. Rebound off of a shot from Matt Dumba, which is great. Again, like long as Matt Dumba can help serve up rebounds with that dumb bomb, as they say, he'll get plenty of assists that way. And then he can start factoring more and more on the board. And that's always great. He was able to get two assists during the course of this game. Sometimes you just put the puck on net, and that's as, that's as simple as it gets. That was on Felino's first goal. And then Felino, recipient of Jules Eriksson Eck, for the fifth goal of the game to kind of, kind of sort of put the game on ice. And Matt Boldy ultimately did on the power play Kaprizov on the power play, a little bit of a. It was it was a pretty pretty spectacular play where Kaprizov didn't give up on it, got his own rebound and finished it. Boldy and Zuccarello were able to get the assists. Nice to see Boldy with Kaprizov. I think that's a wonderful thing on the power play. Obviously, that's not it's nothing new, but it is nice to watch. And yeah, because the talk in the past was how um, Fiala and Kaprizov can't play together. They're too puck dominant per se. They're both puck dominant at times, where Felino was more about trying to score the goal. I thought there was some chemistry there, but Felino himself said it, that it's probably not the best idea. So, well, it brought some balance. He had two big-time scorers and two different power play units, so that was always pretty cool. Um, and obviously things coming through here with Boldy and Kaprizov. You gotta like that. Gosh, Lindy Ruff looks old. I'm seeing this in the background on the NHL network. Now I can <laughs> obviously have the thing set up where I can watch. I can't believe how good New Jersey is this year. I mean, they're starting to look like the Devils that won Stanley Cups. I don't think they will, but geez, <laughs> they might. <laughs> they might. And that's uh, our next opponent, Miss Marner of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yes, anyhow. But a nice, wonderful, wonderful night. And of course, the acquisition of Ryan Reeves, the departure of Tyson, Yo- uh, Tyson Jost, obviously again, kind of cap casualty in a sense, in a sense, and of course just the fact he wasn't playing well, he wasn't doing anything really, like to see what happened, but ultimately three assists, no goals in 12 games for Minnesota this past year, he did have two goals and four assists in 21 games last year for Minnesota after the trade, and uh, well, (laughs) a week ago, a week ago the guy guy he was traded for, of course, (laughs) had, already had, Stern, of course, had um, Nico Stern already had six goals for the Sharks. So, not a good team, but six goals is six goals. So, all right. <laughs> Two games so far for Tyson Jones. He had that one fight, and he's a minus one. All right, because you see the five penalty minutes and the usual zero on the scoreboard, unfortunately. But we'll see. Best of luck to Tyson Jost. I'm not rooting against him or anything. It's just too bad that it didn't work out here. There was, you know, there's always that hope, kind of like, kind of like taking a lottery ticket, this high-end uh, draft pick, bring him in, hope for the best, and then sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. Looks like New Jersey won again, but that was a kicking motion, wasn't it? Or was he just kicking it to himself and then he released the puck? Well, nope, they killed it. They they did kill it. There was a kicking motion. This ain't soccer, buddy. <laughs> but now here comes New Jersey. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I'm. My mind's wandering and my eyes are wandering as well but not in the way you might think, just watching hockey, not the other thing. <clears throat> Anyhow, Minnesota 2-for-1 in the three-game series. That's pretty cool, or three-game, you know, gay, <laughs> a week of three games. Oh, New Jersey finally lost to Toronto, so they did lose. Okay. Anyhow, um, it's not like I watch every game every night. And I'm, and I was a little distracted last night, screwing around on Apple Podcast Connect, trying to eliminate all the uh, duplicate... <laughs> Duplicate feeds, not for just this show, but duplicate feed for Pro Mafia and Timberwolves Explosion as well, which could really confuse potential listeners. And that's the last thing you want, is your listeners confused. Because guess what? You're screwed. <laughs> you lose. 
you, you snooze, you lose, that kind of thing. The Mike Madonna Award winner for this episode? Boy. I, you know, it, I don't think it's a single scorer. You know, it. Matt Dumb is at least an honorable mention. He had a pretty good week. He had a pretty good week. Um, it might be, I'm leaning towards Gustafson. I think he's been pretty good. I think he's been pretty damn good. Help. He definitely held down the fort. He had that crappy game versus Pittsburgh. But that was his first game as like, a, uh-oh, you're going to be starting for a while, buddy. Yeah, giving up just two goals versus Carolina and Winnipeg. That's pretty good. And obviously the Wild absolutely dominated the puck versus Winnipeg. Dominated the puck. How many shots on goal? Like well into the 30s for Minnesota. Yeah, 39 shots on goal versus Connor Hellebuck. And then Philip Gustafson faced 29 and only gave a one. And it's a talented team. So I want to give Philip Gustafson his first Mike McDonough Award for this episode. The um, <clears throat> And of course, again, like I said, Brandon DeHaim will not play versus Toronto. Another injury. So, But it doesn't sound like it's the end of the world, but he's going to miss a game or two. The James Shepard Memorial. Oh, you know, I Jared Spurgeon. No, no, it's not Jared Spurgeon. I think it might be. I mean, it might be Zuccarello. He's kind of been coasting a bit. That certainly has not been all that special. And when you look at all the other names on the roster, I don't know, Zuccarello seems to be the guy that's been kind of, he's been kind of a ghost of late. Yeah, he's, he's put up points. He's put up points, but it feels like something's missing. Like something's missing from him lately. It's a very gentle one because obviously he has points. He has 18 points. But sometimes there's more to hockey than just points, I suppose, <laughs> obviously. So uh, it's it's been a frustration. It's hard to give it to Kaprizov for so many reasons, including the fact he had a multi-point game last night and all that, and he was a big part of things. Uh, so, uh, yeah, for now, it's a very gentle one to Zuccarello. I don't think he's been the prettiest player out there. And the fact that Dumba's been putting points on the board and he's playing a bit better. I think he deserves credit. So, six points in 19 games. That's nothing to, you know, he's not going to win any awards for that. But it's, it's okay. It's a little better. It's better than what it's been. So, I mean, what was he at? Like two points last time? So, he's at four points this past week. So, of course, major credit. Big, uh, big uh, high five to him. We could call it we could call it a high five, I suppose. Kalen Edison being invisible wasn't fun either, but a nice game versus Winnipeg. With that, we'll take a quick break, come back, and preview the upcoming three games, look at the prospects, and then, of course, segment three, fan interaction is back, baby. on Brave the Wild, segment number two. And now I for sure have all the appropriate <laughs> all the appropriate ads together as they're three separate ones for the three separate shows and I should know better. Sorry, I believe I talked about football on all of them last week. There is an NHL one, an NBA one, and an NFL one. So my deep apologies to all of you and to, of course, DraftKings and all the different networks with uh, Dylan and Kyle. So <laughs> Hockey Podcast Network in this case, of course. Hockey fans, light the lamp this winter with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL. New customers can bet just $5 pregame money line on any NHL team to win their game and get $150 in free bets if they do. If that isn't enough excitement, you can turn small bets into bigger payouts with same game parlays. Combine multiple bets like which team will win, how many goals will be scored, and more for your shot at an even bigger pay, uh, payout. Pardon me. <laughs> Call to action, right? No. <laughs> Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code THPN. Bet $5 on any NHL team to win their game and get $150 in free bets if they do. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code THPN. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details, and you will definitely see the disclaimer in the show notes. Thank you, thank you, DraftKings and the Hockey Podcast Network, of course, for having me. 
As for moving into next week here, well, this week into the next three games, the Toronto Maple Leafs come to town in a matinee. In a matinee. Yep, on Black Friday. Can I say this? Loss. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not because Toronto's so great and we're so bad. Win a matinee game and get back to me, okay? These always don't. These always go bad. I hate these. I hate these matinee games. Just like Kirk Cousins hates playing at 3 o'clock or 7 o'clock oftentimes. But those nooners, Kirk Cousins, 350 yards and three touchdowns, and the Vikings are going to the Super Bowl until they play at 3, 3, uh, 330 against the Dallas Cowboys, then then they, that doesn't look like a Super Bowl team in that case. Uh, Minnesota Wild are that way with these nooners, these, these matinees. They, I'm so sick of how poorly this team plays in matinees, and I'm not a big fan of them anyway. Matinees are, matinees are for football, you know, like nooners. I love nooners for football. I'm like Kirk Cousins that way. But sometimes Sunday night, Channel 11, well, you know, NBC, to be more frank, for those of you that aren't in Minnesota, NBC, yeah, it's, yeah, nice to watch. Uh, otherwise, obviously, I don't know, would be nice to be on TNT or ESPN as well regarding the Minnesota Wild. But, well, unfortunately, again, a, a matinee, I, I don't like these. They don't seem to put uh, farewell for the Minnesota Wild historically. Why that is, I'm not sure. Maybe they're just like me. Like, uh, why can't we play at 7 or 8 or 9? Sometimes those 9 o'clock games are awesome where you can just kind of chill and it's already, you know, you're, you're chilling. You know, maybe you watched a, a different game earlier, like the Timberwolves or something, and you can just chill and, lay, and sit back and enjoy a late game. Or vice versa, the Wilder at 6 or 7 and then the Wolves play. You know, that's kind of fun. Otherwise, for the Toronto Maple Leafs, Mitch Marner, 24 points. He's got those... 20 assists, definitely a great playmaker. John Tavares right behind him with 12 goals, 11 assists. Nylander, 10 goals, 11 assists. Austin Matthews, <laughs> 9 goals, or yeah, 12 assists. Morgan Riley, defenseman, with 16 assists. Obviously getting the job done there with 6 power play assists. I think there'd be more, but yeah, 10 power play assists for Mitch Mitchell Marner. Obviously he's had a wonderful season to be, to be, uh, to be safe. There's been a bit of a yeah, there's been a, a committee at goalie, and they're all doing pretty good, to be quite honest. Matt Murray, only five games, 2.41 goals against average. Samsonov, of course, he's missed some time. That's part of what, what's going on. 2.23 goals against average. He's been fantastic. And Eric Kalgren's been pretty, yeah, he's been okay. He's the he's the third stringer, and he's had four overtime losses. Absolutely snake bit during the course of this season. That's got to suck. <laughs> um, and two, two losses in regulation, two wins. Goals against average again, 287. Save percentage about 89. Where Samsonov, 92 save percentage. Matt Murray close to 93. Again, another case where sometimes the backup goalie might face more shots. So his goals against average is worse. But wonderful save percentage for Matt Murray. Matt Murray. <sighs> Mark Giordano, only four points. He's kind of vanished off the face of the earth. Of course, no longer with Seattle. The age is definitely coming around. He's at least been playing in the games. That's good. But... Again, ancient history now, unfortunately. T.J. Brody, only two points. Former Calgary Flame. I remember him very, very well. Jordy Ben, remember him as well, too. Remember Jordy Ben with Minnesota? Yeah. Toronto, 3-2 and two in their last five. They lo- uh, No, they beat the Pittsburgh Penguins 5-2 to two on the 15th of November. Lost to New Jersey like everybody else <laughs> on the 17th. They beat Buffalo... Five to two, not bad on the nineteenth versus the Nylanders. No, <laughs> yeah, the Nylanders. I'm just kidding. The Islanders, who've been playing very well. Toronto loses three to two, and they and they ended New Jersey's hot streak two to one victory for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Impressive win there. Good job, Toronto. So uh, I don't like the Wild's chances in this game. I don't know. It seems like every gosh darn time the Minnesota Wild play in these stupid matinee games, particularly Black Friday, which seems to be a tradition, could come out flat. Maybe we give up four goals, five goals, or we just lose two to one to the New York Islanders or two nothing, stuff like that. It's happened before, and it's frustrating. Uh, we play the Toronto Maple Leafs a few months from now, next time around, two months. It's only two months away. Weird. So, is it? No, that's three months away. February twenty fourth. Yeah, winter doesn't go that fast. Three months. February twenty fourth. We go to Toronto on another Friday. So cute, I suppose. Toronto only 18th in goals with all that talent, but because they're more top-heavy. The Wilder 24th, though. Goals against the Wilder 6th in the league. That's pretty good. And Toronto 8th. So pretty good goaltending on both sides, believe it or not, despite an awful start 
again, Gustafson has been pretty good, of course, and, and Fleury had improved in a big way. Gustafson actually has a better goals against average than Marc-Andre Fleury, if you can believe it, because he's had some really, really nice games. Just had a couple crappy ones. 2.62 goals against average, to be exact. Save percentage 91.4 in Gustafson's case. Fleury might be back for this game. Maybe. He's close. I'm guessing it's Gustafson. We'll see. Uh, but either way, I think Toronto wins something like 4-2. to two. I know I say that score probably like every five seconds and you're sick of hearing it, but I think that's what's going to happen. 4-2 to two win for Toronto. Maybe an empty netter or something. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Arizona? Well, that's kind of like no excuses. Even though they're better this year than last year. They're 7-9-2. and two. Still, it's got to be a winnable game. This is an XL Energy Center. That huge uh, seven-game homestand continues. Arizona. I didn't look at the injuries for Toronto. I'm going to backtrack. I apologize. And obviously Minnesota has injuries as well, but I won't go over those in every game. Just the first one. Jordy Ben. Okay. Well, yeah, no, he's only played in six games. Morgan Riley knee left the game on the 21st, so that might help the Wilds' chances. An oblique for TJ Brody. That's why he's only played in 15 games. Jonas, yeah, Jonas Brodin didn't play last night, did he? That's why you saw Galagoski. That's true. And then Brandon DeHaim left the game with an undisclosed injury. But apparently Brodin's not feeling well, like everybody, <laughs> everybody. And Marcus Felino left the game as well. So that's irritating. Yeah, Felino was the other guy. It sounds like he's okay, though. Um, yeah, a, a possible head injury. We know what those could be. But it does sound like he's okay. I remember hearing that. But DeHaim, undisclosed and... Uh, so, come on, Deham. He's playing so damn well. Uh, so, yes, I apologize for backtracking. I do this every single time I do the show. The first game, I oh, yeah, you know, we'll just keep moving here. No, we're not going to keep moving here. Arizona, Tuso, Velamaki. Velamaki, that rolls right off your tongue, doesn't it? Uh, upper body injury on the 23rd. Sounds familiar. Josh Brown, upper body injury, left the game on the 21st. This is all November. Zach Cassian. Not Matt Cassian, but Zach Cassian, apparently. Lower body injury as of the 1st of November for the Arizona, gosh, the Arizona Coyotes. 31st in goals. Mm, second worst team in the league, only 48. But uh, not far behind the Wild, though. They, they only need six more goals to tie us. They're mediocre in the net, 15th, okay. Um, not a whole lot of playmaking. Yeah, they're really low there. Both teams are, honestly. Oh, I... Might want to look at special teams, too. I'm going to backtrack to Toronto again. I am so sorry. Toronto's 6th on the power play. The Wild's 14th. 17th is Toronto on the penalty kill. The Wild is 10th. So, again, how that kind of seesaws. Penalty minutes. The Wild are terrible. 31st. They have tons of penalty minutes. And Toronto's in the middle, 16th. So, apologize for the backtracking. I'm an idiot. I'm moving too fast here. Power play. Arizona is 8th in the league. Arizona, despite the fact they only have, uh, they're the, they're terrible in goals uh, overall, but the special teams are pretty good. This is where Arizona can beat you because they're eighth in the power play and eighth in the penalty kill. They can beat you. So it's possible. That's why they're seven and nine. They're, they're, they're dramatically improved in terms of special teams. Good for them. Like last year, they just, they were like 30th something, 28th and everything. Remember Sunday, November the 27th, of course, is Arizona. This is in the X, and it's another matinee. It's another matinee. All right. Well, there's no Viking game, so I guess we can watch that one without any... And that's probably why it's there. They don't want to compete with the Vikings, do they? This is in the X, of course. January 14th in the X. Saturday at 7. Monday at 8 in Arizona. February 6th. Sunday, March 12th. 8.30. I like that. I like that late, late Sunday kind of thing. That is kind of cool. March 12th, one thing, which kind of looks like today right now. Today kind of looks and feels like March 12th. Kind of, kind of, kind of, you know, kind of foggy, kind of moist, and warming up a bit. So, yeah. Anyhow, that's what it looks like in the Twin Cities anyway. Golden Valley, Minnesota, to be exact. So now we'll talk about the Edmonton Oilers. They have a nice, they have an, uh, they have a nice goalie named Skinner is getting better and better. So that's a good sign for Edmonton, I suppose, even though they're kind of floating around where we are, which is not good for either of us. Stuart Skinner's not that good, but Jack Campbell has been a disaster. Four goals a game. What's going on, Jack? Come on, Jack. Hit the road, Jack. Okay, I had to. Stuart Skinner, 2.78 goals against average. Save percentage is 92. So, again, too many shots given up. 
by that Edmonton uh, defense and forwards and all that stuff. They're just kind of like, let's score goals. Let's score. Let's just outscore everybody. Come on, we can do it. Let's just kick every. Oh, great. We just gave up our ninth goal of the <laughs> our ninth goal of the week, and it's only Tuesday. Sorry, sorry about that, Jack. <laughs> Save percentage eighty-seven. Come on, Jack. Make the stop, Jack. Connor McDavid. Who's that? I never heard of him. It's Connor McDonald. No, okay. Thirty-five points for him. Sixteen of them goals. Yes, he's the best player in the world. He's the Gretzky kind of. No, he's not. But he's Connor McDavid. Uh, Leon Dreisaitl with 11 goals, but more more assists uh, right now. 31 total points. Ryan Nugent Hopkins having a pretty damn good year. He's on pace for about 84 points or so. Not bad, eh? 9 goals, 12 assists. Zach Hyman, 9 goals, 10 assists. And Evander Kane was playing at about a point-a-game clip before his wrist got clipped by a skate. A skate. The worst combination you can ever imagine. And I'm not making light of it. It had to suck so bad. I mean, it's just, I don't know. Guys are kind of in a scrum. You fall backwards. People are kind of gliding by, and bad things happen. I, I remember years ago, a guy's fingers got, uh, the edge of their fingers got cut off. I believe they had surgery and things were fixed and everything, but that is really nasty and scary. Um, in this case, Evander Kane, we know he talked about slashing a wrist and how people could commit suicide that way with the, the artery pump in there. You know, obviously that's why you find people's pulse. There's a lot of blood flow there. So that was pretty scary. Jumped up and ran, 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 ran like hell. And obviously the pain was insane and all the damage in the wrist. And uh, I can relate to wrist injuries, but not getting slashed at the same time. That had to be awful. So, you know, the whole uh, thoughts and prayers with uh, Evander Kane there of the full and speedy and full recovery for him. Regardless of what people may think of him off the ice, you know, it is what it is. But uh, he was having a hell of a year, and I can't imagine that's helping Edmonton's cause. Uh, Edmonton's 11th in goals, 27th in goals against. So, yep, obviously not good goaltending necessarily, even though Skinner's decent. But, well, he's been better than Jack Campbell, unfortunately. Power play is fourth in the league. That doesn't surprise me too much, but the penalty kill sucks. 29th in the league, and again, that doesn't surprise me either. They haven't been playing good defense. And the goaltending hasn't been good, so it is what it is. 13th in penalty minutes, so good for them when it comes to that. The Wild have to win this one, right? I didn't even mention if the Wild would beat Arizona, but I do think the Wild lose to Toronto 4-2. to two. Most likely got to score versus Toronto. Well, let's uh, <laughs> let's go with uh, <clears throat> let's go with Kalen Addison. He's going to have back-to-back goals. What do you think of that? Games of the, uh, a, a goal in each. So pretty cool for Kalen Addison if that ends up happening. Um, Arizona, 4-2 to win for Minnesota. 4-2 to win in that game. Minnesota, uh, the likely guy to score in that one will go with Boldy. And versus the Edmonton Oilers, 5-2. to two. The Wild are going to beat this team pretty soundly. I th- no, 5-3, to 5-4, to 5-3 to three win for Minnesota versus the Edmonton Oilers. High scoring, fun game, but a win for Minnesota, which is nice in a game they need to win. Uh, Wild go 2-1 and one again, in my humble opinion. They do survive a Sunday matinee <laughs> after losing a Friday matinee. I just have, I don't have a whole lot of faith in that. The Wild have sucked on Black Friday. Uh, just like they sucked on New, uh, New Year's Eve for so long. It was so frustrating. It was so frustrating. The Wild's, what, 12-game winning streak ended on New Year's Eve. Who could forget that? And then the Wild were never the same after that. Still good, but never the same. And that awesome 16-17 season. Re- remember that one? Boudreaux's first year here? Um, where everybody was in career highs, just like last year. You know, it was similar. Uh, a similar type of year, even better. Um, versus Edmonton, I said 5-3. to three. Most likely got to score. I mean, how, let's go with Kirill Kaprizov in this one. But the Wild get the win. I think he has a multi-goal game again. I think he has... I think Kirill Kaprizov has four points. He's going to have his first huge game, and that's his guy. The other guy that wears number 97 on the other side of the ice. God willing, as long as Kaprizov is healthy and playing in that game, because you never know in, in, in any sport, but as long as he's healthy and playing, four points for Kirill Kaprizov in the 5-3 to three victory versus the Edmonton Oilers. And now we'll start to look at prospects. A... Eh? And here I go, putting myself at risk again, talking about prospects because I, I'm under the gun, right? <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm, I'm admittedly no genius when it comes to the prospects, but I do like to keep up with them. 
as, as much as possible. Of course, Jesper Volstead did not get called up because you're not going to do that. I knew it, it had to be Zane McIntyre, right? Uh, Jesper Volstead, 3.24 goals against average so far for the Iowa Wild in six games. He's been he's been adequate. I mean, and of course, yeah, you don't want to throw him to the wolves right now. That's dangerous. Sammy Walker, a point a game player in the AHL. Good for him. Uh, I hope I hope there's a chance in somehow some way he could get called up at some point this year, next year. You know, even if it's just for a cup of coffee, see what he can do. Maybe he'll surprise us. Nick Sweeney, like I said before, definitely uh, definitely a step back from last year where he was way up there for a while. But during the course of the season, it seemed like he was dropping off a little more, a little more, a little more. It was really kind of sad. Uh, seven points in 13 games, but five of them goals. That's cool and everything. Mason Shaw is an NHL player, of course. Yep, and he will be wearing the number 15 for the foreseeable future, and I'm very happy. No more of that weird number he had before, 58, like that. Uh, you know, yeah, he's he's here for now. You know, he's one of those guys, you know. But nope, he's wearing number, number 15. That is the real Mason Shaw. And I love Mason Shaw. I love Mason Shaw, and I'm really happy that he was able to get where he is today. Six points for Adam Beckman. There's another guy who's kind of, well, he's been struggling, but he is 21. That's the positive still with with uh, Adam Beckman. It ain't over yet. He was born in 2001, just, what, three months before the real 9-11. So that's a pretty young guy. So <laughs> that, ain't, that ain't too bad. He, he still's got time. He's not like a 29-year-old, like a Stephen Fogarty, which I feel bad for. Um, Nicholas Patton is an awesome AHL player, 27 years of age. He's a decent, okay, adequate bottom three guy, basically, in the NHL. But again, eight points in five games in the AHL, but he's been up with Minnesota the past week or so. We'll see what happens with Nick Patton and all that. But don't be surprised if Marco Rossi returns to the AHL to, as I say, try to hit a couple home runs and get that batting average up. Yeah, because when I think about AAA, I think about baseball. Hunter Jones got to be in uh, one game, and he was really good in the AHL, and I noticed that. Get that guy's freaking confidence up. That's what I say. Hunter Jones, uh, as if if he's going to remain with the Iowa Heartlanders, he's going to be done. He's he, he, his, his career is going to be going to be bleeped. That's the crappy part about all this, but of course, you know Zane McIntyre is coming back to the AHL, and then poor Hunter back to the freaking ECHL, so I feel for him. Maybe the Wild will have to trade Zane McIntyre as good as he is, and you really appreciate him. That that might be the only way to save Hunter Jones, because I think he is facing a firing squad with the Iowa Heartlanders. Ryan O'Rourke only one point in 12 games, and like Derek says, and he'll tell you time and time again, he is a good one or two years away at least. So, again, and yeah, I mean, and it's it's it, it shows. He's just not there. And I, he's not going to be a major point producer anyway. But, I mean, I don't know. If he, if, he, if he ever gets called up anytime super soon, it'll be for a cup of coffee. And, well, I mean, he's he's 20, so no rush there. Damon Hunt, also only 20, two points in 14 games. I do think next year you're going to see a significant improvement from Damon Hunt and Ryan O'Rourke. I think you're going to see that step forward, maybe even the second half of the season. Guys like Damon Giroux, he's now 22. Rhyme not intended. Only three assists in 12 games. He's got the same point total as Simon Joe Hansen, a guy who doesn't, a, a, a stay-at-home type defenseman. Seriously. Seriously? 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 <laughs> yeah, it's not real good. Mitchell Chaffee, we like what he does, but he's he's been kind of up and down as well. Of course, he was up to the NHL for a little bit too, but didn't see a whole lot of action, unfortunately. Joe Hickett's another one of those quad-A defensemen who's awesome in the AHL, and NHL is kind of barely there. And then Fogarty, similar thing, fourth line type of guy in the NHL who you're not going to see a whole lot, unfortunately. Uh, Michael Milner, age 19, skating in the AHL. Good for him. One goal, one assist in six games thus far. Um, so that's kind of how it is there. And, yeah, I mean, obviously these guys are a ways away. I know my knowledge isn't up to par to some, some of you out there, and I completely I understand and I agree. <laughs> So I will take any correction that is thrown my direction. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. I'll humbly accept it. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm no genius, and I I admit it. Marco Rossi's two years away. It feels like it, doesn't it? It feels like he's two years away. You know, I mean, if somebody told me that right now, Joey, Marco Rossi's one to two years away from NHL hockey, I'd be like, you know what? You're right. That's what it looks like, doesn't it? 
Yes, it might be coming off like a jerk saying that, but uh, I mean, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it, it's too bad. I do think the time's going to come when he's going to break through, but I don't know. We have been through it before where guys are highly touted, and it's just, I don't know, it takes forever, and a lot of times maybe they're just not as good as we thought. Oh, I hope that's not the case. Please, Marco Rossi, you can do it. Believe it in you, please. <laughs> Jack McBain, that's funny. Seven points in 28 total games in the NHL so far. Good for him, I guess. He's not that productive. Um, he's just not. So, let's look at who's Nadine off real quick. Well, uh, yeah, first off, and that's the other thing. I guess he's done, right? He's pretty much done, and I was kind of hinting at that. On the last episode, I was kind of hinting that he's probably done, but maybe we'll look at him for the hell of it, just in case by some miracle he still winds up here. But it sounds like he is probably not going to wind up with the Wild. He's probably looking like, eh, you have too many prospects, and I don't think you care about me that much. Three points so far for a torpedo, we'll call them, because I can't pronounce the other. Okay, Nov Novgorod, I think I have that. He's on loan to the KHL. He's on loan, whatever that means. Uh, three points in 12 games. I thought he was, I thought he'd signed a contract, but maybe he's on loan from the, uh, what do they call it, the MHL? Yeah. So, <laughs> Vladislav Firstov rolls right off your tongue. Merit Kuznadinov, that rolls right off your tongue too. He's obviously a KHL player and has been pretty good, and he's not, he's not on his way out, I don't think. I think he's going to stick around, at least I hope so. 13 points over in 33 games. For SKA St. Petersburg. That's a little bit easier to pronounce. A little bit. Um, three goals, 10 assists. He's projected for 26 and 67, basically, so far. And, yeah, I mean, he's, he's promising. I don't think he's going to ever be this great scorer, but he's a hell of a skater and brings some grit and some, some uh, definitely brings a lot of uh, strong defense and such. So really appreciate what, what he can do <laughs> when it comes to that. Uh, any more foreign players, look at them, then we'll jump to college. Liam Ugrin, Ogren, Ugrin. I, I've heard Ugrin and I've heard Ogren. I'll go with, I'll go with Ugrin. That's probably more accurate. He has one point so far in the International Junior and and in the uh, Desjardins. He's got six points, four goals, uh, four of them goals in 19 games so far for that Sweden, Sweden League, you can call it. So good for him. Liam Ugrin, of course, again, only 18 years of age, so don't expect a ton of productivity. Danila Yurov, the guy a lot of us are excited about, and the actual the actual acquisition, if I'm remembering correctly. Or no, it really was Ugrin, wasn't it? I think Danila Yurov was our pick. Yeah, had to be. Because actually, yeah, the Kings had a worse season than the Wild, so even though they were decent last year. In the KHL, seven points, so at least, again, he's scoring, where last year he was 21 games, zero points in the KHL, but he, what was he, like 17 half of the year? So, I mean, hello? <laughs> Good luck. In the KHL, are you kidding me? He's going to he's gonna be great as a 17-year-old. If he was, he'd be the number one pick in the draft, probably. You know, like, he's Kirill Kaprizov right now, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but seven points in 31 games, that's not bad. In the KHL, and three points in four MHL games. So it looks like he's playing MHL now. Or maybe he'll be a bit more dominant, closer to a point a game so far at that level. All right, and remember how young he is. Yeah, he was 17 half of the season last year. in the And he was in the KHL. I mean, think about that. That's a big jump, man. You know, So don't be surprised if the scoring isn't there at that stage of his young, young, young career. Let's look at, well, Spacek, he's not, yeah, he's in the juniors, though, yeah. It's like he's not, <laughs> he's not from North America, but he is playing in North America. But yeah, that's what I thought. He's in the queue, of course. 22 points in uh, 21 games. He's been great, absolutely dominant. He, <laughs> he looks like really, you know, obviously watch out for the junior players. You know, sometimes they have these great numbers like Beckman. Uh, Hovanov is a huge one, like 100-point level talent. <clears throat> 50 goals for uh, whatever that guy's uh, for for Sergey not too long ago. So that was uh, uh, Dmitry Solokov. Pardon me, Sergey Dmitry Solokov. He was a 50 point guy, and well, you know, unfortunately that didn't work out either. But <clears throat> this guy does look legit. I think very promising. Definitely a guy who can score points and may have a future. We'll see. We'll see. Fifth round pick. It's not that impossible. And that's what the Wild gave up in 2025. Fifth round pick for Ryan Reeves, but we'll see. Uh, Petrovsky, 
Servak Patrowski, kind of like that one. Uh, yep, he is Slovenian, right? Yep, that's what I thought. Slovakia, anyway. Um, he played for Chechia at under 16, interestingly enough. And he's in the OHL as well, the Owen Sound Attack. Nine goals, 12 assists. Not bad. 21 points, dominating those juniors, which is good, which, which is really encouraging when they're only 18 years of age. A five foot nine center, smaller guy again, but definitely skilled, to say the least. <clears throat> so now we'll be able to move back and forth here. Apologize. <clears throat> I've been trouble, having trouble breathing here lately. What the heck is going on there, right? Nikita Nesterenko, junior year, that's right, Boston College, and he has taken a step back. Uh, well, he, he had. He's picking it up a bit lately, thankfully. Um, one goal and five assists in ten games, so getting a little bit, obviously, yeah, had a decent week this past week. Marshall Warren, yep, yeah, he's at about half a point a game, which has been pretty much the pace all season. One goal, four assists. He is a small defenseman with some skill and some grit. <clears throat> oh, I am having trouble breathing. I apologize. Nate Benoit, old <laughs> old one point a week guy. He's again half a point now. Again, adding a couple points this past week. One goal, six assists. Good for him. Um, he's about half a point now uh, in 16 games for the Omaha Lancers. Definitely getting better. Carson Lambos, of course, a guy a lot of people look at as a possible top defenseman someday. He's at over a point a game, and he should be at this stage because now he's 19 in the juniors. You're hoping he's going to dominate that junior level really well, like 80 points, 60, 70 points, something like that. 18 assists so far, and he's a plus 20. Good for him with the Winnipeg Ice, and hopefully he can stay healthy. Jack Pert definitely picked it up. He'd been off to a really slow start. Nice week last week. Now at nine assists on the season in 14 games as a sophomore for St. Cloud State. Canadian Bankier, yep, uh, much stronger year than last year. Definitely a step forward, and he did look really good, as I keep saying this, but I'll keep saying it anyway. Looked really promising in the prospect camp. He was kind of one of those dark horse, like, oh, wow, he's actually surprising me a little bit. He was 86th overall pick in the draft, so he is, he's, <laughs> there had to be some value for him to go in the third round. And um, he is 6'2", so 6'2", center. Something kind of important for Minnesota, possibly, going forward. 21 points in only 17 games, 13 goals for Canyon Banker with a Cam Loomps Blazers. Kyle Masters, again, another guy who's taken a step forward. Like last year, he was, you know, and he's a defenseman. He's already exceeded last year's numbers. He played in 65 games last year, had only 14 points, right? Plus minus of 24. That's really, 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 really good, right? Went from the Red Deer Rebels, now he's on the Cam Loomps Blazers with the guy I just talked about, Canyon Banker. In only 17 games, 18 points. He's a, he's he's even in the plus minus, but wow, awesome production. Already exceeded, <laughs> already has four more assists than last year in a fraction of the amount of games. So that's outstanding. The huge step forward for Kyle Masters. Josh Pilar, he's a point a game player again. He stunk with Saskatoon after doing pretty well with Kemla. It's about point a game. Now he's back to the point a game uh, level. Fourth round pick, last draft in 2021. Looks promising. Well, yeah, the, the draft a, a year and a half ago now. He's promising, but we'll see. He's kind of probably more of a dark horse at this stage uh, and all that. So Hunter hates a lot of people. Love what he can do. An insanely young player, again, who was pretty damn good for OHL level at a 17-year-old. Let's keep saying that, 17-year-old. Unfortunately, the numbers have been down right now for the Barry Colts. Less than a point a game, and he's a center, so Again, insanely young. And the fact that he had 41 points as a 17-year-old with 22 goals. That's pretty impressive. Even though it's it's the juniors, Joey. Yeah, as a 17-year-old, though. That's pretty damn young. So, you know, there's 18, 19, maybe even 20-year-olds there on occasion. So, so uh, regular Lawrence, University of Denver. Three points so far as a left wing in, in 11 games. One of them goals. We'll see what happens with that. Michael Milne, again, has been with the Wild for a little bit. The Iowa Wild, anyway, like I talked about earlier. He's got two points at six games. Ryan Healy, I believe. Yep, he's last but not least. Ryan Healy, playing for Harvard. He's getting educated at Harvard, and he's got five points as a defenseman in only seven games. As an 18-year-old freshman out of Chicago, Illinois, he's actually even younger than... Um, 
Which guy was that? Was that Hate? Yeah, Hunter Hate. He's even younger than Hunter Hate. He's like a month and a half younger. Wow. 2004. May 19th, 2004. Wow. <laughs> so, promising. And people were really excited about Ryan Healy in the prospect camp back in the summer. So, people were like, whoa, this guy's good. So, we'll see. We'll see. He might end up being one of those awesome picks that uh, surprises you. So, off to a great start for Harvard. And that's encouraging. That's encouraging. Like it or not, he's doing a great job. So with that, that's the end of the prospect conversation. Uh, <laughs> with that said, we'll come back and talk for fan, with fan interaction right after this. back here on Brave the Wild segment number three and again I want to apologize if I seem a little bit loopy I'm not I'm not feeling my best obviously like they say stuff's going around I'm not feeling my absolute best it could be a lot worse so I'm okay just I don't know you know how things can go at this time of year you just don't feel so hot on certain days especially with the lack of sunlight and such which is irritating um so again thought I'd bring that up also another thing that came to my attention is I was (laughs) saving Saving the data here. This is episode 299, so we all know what next episode will be. 300, so pretty cool. Episode 300, big milestone for Brave the Wild going forward. Uh, don't expect to do any crazy stuff like a live show and, and a live this and, oh, no, this is great. But, yeah, no, I don't think so. With that said, let's get to fan interaction at Brave the Wild, at Brave the Wild. And, of course, Facebook.com forward slash Brave the Wild as well. But people don't usually interact on that one, unfortunately. Derek Felska, this is just kind of like right here, just right in the, um, I'm going to read a couple of tweets here, uh, not just from Derek, but one from Michael Russo, right here in the feed before I even look up the hashtag BTWMN, and when you want to comment to the show, do hashtag BTWMN, yep, and Derek will mention that as well in his uh, bat signal, Derek says, happy Thanksgiving, and and again, at crease assist, crease and assist, at crease and assist is his Twitter account, Happy Thanksgiving and safe travels to everyone who is doing so today. Enjoy the moments you have together because you never know how many you'll have. You really don't. Hashtag Happy Thanksgiving and Happy Thanksgiving to you as well, Derek. I will retweet that one right there. Michael Russo, I had to see this. I had to see, uh, I mean, when I saw this, this is interesting. So Michael Russo says, honest question. How is it humanly possible that so many fans think training one year of Matt Dumba's six million was going to allow the Minnesota Wild to afford eight years of Kevin Fiala? Like I'm like I like <laughs> like I'm no mathematician, but this isn't complex stuff to comprehend. Well, yeah, the math doesn't yeah because well, how much is Fiala making over eight, right? So it wouldn't have hurt, but yeah, only one year though. Yeah, only one year. It's like, yeah, you freed up a spot for a short time. So that doesn't guarantee anything. So, yeah, I feel you there. And then it's eight years. Yeah. So it is what it is. Fiala is what he is. He's doing really nice for the Los Angeles Kings. He's not a franchise player, but he's a really nice piece. I'm going to look at his exact numbers right now since it's brought up. Yeah, he's doing really well. Yep. He's on pace for about 80, 79, 80 points this year. So seven goals, 14 assists. Sure, sure, I'd take him. He'd be right up there with Kaprizov right now. And Kaprizov's numbers would probably be higher. So it is a damn shame. It's a damn shame. But it is what it is. Well, you know, that stupid cap nonsense. It, it is what it is. And, of course, you, you have to keep Kaprizov. I mean, <laughs> you lose Kaprizov, you might as well just, well, we're right back in Mediocreville again. You might as well get Warren Peters back and uh, guys like that from about, like, from the doldrums of uh, 2011. When the Wild had like 99 injuries and such, and and woo, Miko Koivu was leading us in scoring. Yeah, it's Miko Koivu, baby. That's what it's all about. Yeah, God bless him and everything. But if he's your best player, you're not good. Sorry. Next uh, hashtag BTWMN. Well, there's a notification. Ben Johnson followed. Go for it, coach. Huh? No, I'm kidding. Sorry, I had to say that. Christina Carpenter. Okay, I forgot I followed. Okay, so hashtag BTWMN. Let's get this set up and ready to roll. Just wanted to look at the news feed for the hell of it quick. Get everything in chronological order if humanly possible. 
<clears throat> since the last episode. Yep. I believe I'm just about there. What happened? Where'd it go? You fool! Where did it go, anyway? I thought I did the most... Yeah, okay, so it is going to be... Now, that area is a concern. Uh, why isn't it showing the actual episode? Did I not hashtag it? Okay, I did. And uh, Tom Hayen quickly... Uh, yep, he, like, retweeted it with a hashtag. Yep, and thank you so much, Tom. I really appreciate that. I was tweeting out, I do like this year's retro more than last year's, but it's actually two years ago, I apologize. 2021. Yep, it was around Thanksgiving when we first talked about those. That was this episode two years ago. Um, I was saying, like, because these really, really look like the North Stars, I'm all in. I got, I think, at least one response and a bunch of likes. Derek says, I agree. Best looking sweaters the Minnesota Wild have ever had. Yes, yes, yes. Yep, they are. I, I, I must not have realized he said that. That's cool. Eric Burton says, I don't know. I want the Wild to have their own identity. Those jerseys, those jerseys are North Stars colors. Yeah, I like the North Stars colors, though. So, I like the North Stars colors. I, I missed it. And I know, I understand you want them to have their own identity. Now, the Winnipeg Jets did that when they brought the Winnipeg Jets back. Same name, but then they have this ugly ass. Uh, I don't like them. Um... And then Derek responds back with, it doesn't mean it has to be Christmas all, the, Christmas all of the time either. The Minnesota Wild logo is their identity. They can change the colors if they wish. The question is, will they? So, and I think there was one more reply. Eric Burton says, I like the Wild Christmas jerseys. I do too, <clears throat> but I would like to see these as well. I, I think that's awesome. But <clears throat> even if it was like a third jersey that they'd wear sometimes. Apparently there's supposed to be a third jersey one of these decades. I'm not sure when. But, I mean, they've been talking about it for about five years now. So we'll see if it happens. Because, oh, there was the pandemic. And the, uh, and then they're waiting to get past the winter classic. And then and then they're waiting for um, for uh, the next presidential election. And, and then they're waiting for uh, they're waiting for the XL Energy Center to be cha to change the name to NSP Center. It's like, hello? You know, it's like, what, 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 what's next? You know, I put out a poll. Which uh, says, uh, which reverse retros do you like more, last year's or this year's? And it ended up being, yeah, incorrect the year. It was actually 2020, 21. I apologize for that. But 90% went green, 10% went white. And then nobody picked Canticide or neither. Um, was there a reply? There was. Dan, Minnesota of all people. Cool. He says, the Fighting Saints. Yep, the Fighting Saints ones they should have used. Yep. I thought there were some replies after that. I think I did. Oh, maybe he deleted it because he didn't want me to, to uh, shout out to his book. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, it's a great book, so I highly recommend it where he writes about the uh, fighting saints. And yeah, it's the whole point that Dan was trying to make was, no, I mean, it's like, give, give them some respect. It's the 50-year anniversary of the fighting saints. So I completely understand that. I do. Um, it is a shame how, how that gets ignored. Yep. So it would have been nice, <clears throat> but I, I mean, I love the North Star colors as well. But yes, his point was it's the 50-year anniversary, so take advantage of that. Why not? They should at least have a day or two. They should have like a day or two of that. And I, th I think they easily could. Easily, right? So I'm, I'm with you, Dan. And Maybe was it a quote tweet? There it is. I said, sponsored by Dan Winnesota. Okay, here we go. Now he might get a reply. And then he said, yep, it may come off that way, but it's their 50th anniversary. The Wilds literally play on their grave. Yeah, because it's in St. Paul, right? Where, yep, Civic Center. Yeah, I, I'm glad they're starting to embrace North Star's history more. But this was a missed opportunity, especially with so many Minnesotans on that team. Selling books ain't that important. Yeah, so, so he did keep that there. I thought he got rid of it. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I'm totally... I, I totally understand what you mean because of the 50 year anniversary. That's the big part. So the timing, it's, it's the timing, not the fact that it's North Star jerseys. Like it's a bad thing, but it's the timing. Um, yeah. But I was saying just having fun. And he said, he said, I figured and I appreciate that, but I want it to be clear. I'd rather they honor these guys than sell books. The books are a fun distraction from real life for me. Not really concerned about the money. And yep, I hear you. So, yep. Dan Minnesota, always great to hear from him. It's, it's, yeah. Some pretty cool people follow this show, let me tell you. And I have Derek to thank for a lot of that, no doubt about it. I mean, I, I probably wouldn't have 
you know, probably wouldn't have made acquaintances with uh, some of these wonderful people, so friends and such. Um, interesting. J.C. Werner's, yeah, but, uh, so Derek shared this, and then I'll get back, we'll get to Derek's reply here. It's like a quote tweet. <sighs> what, what, what was the conversation about here? Okay, so we'll kind of go back and forth. Bedard would need to earn a spot and learn how to play the right way, according to what the GM has said. Probably would need a year or two in Iowa first. Derek responded with, he hasn't done anything that really begs you to give him more opportunity either. His careless turnover in our own end is a good example of that. Sending him to Iowa might be the best for both parties. JC responds with, it sure would. The turnover was awful. My comment was tongue and cheek. Uh, was was tongue and cheek shot at Billy Boyd's that feel he can do no wrong. I mean, we have Goligoski running the press box popcorn machine at two million per year for the next two years. <laughs> yeah, yep. <laughs> Derek says I agree with you. Rossi wasn't the revelation that Billy Goats thought he'd be. Goligoski sitting in the press box kind of indicates we didn't need to make that signing, even though so many of them tried to make it sound like we did in order to honor the handshake. Yep. Yep, I feel you there. So, good thoughts there. I was saying six shots on goal, and we're about midway through the game. Let that sink in. Yep, I believe that was against... <clears throat> yeah, that was Carolina. Yep, nothing was happening. There was really a gritty, gritty night. Um, teams both blocking shots. But, yeah, the other team did look better. That was Carolina. Derek says, it's like watching a JV team playing a varsity team. And I was saying, somehow we steal it at the last second. Crazy. Good thing they finally stepped up. Yep. So now we finally get to the actual questions. But great conversation as well. Thank you for that. Derek says, Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Got a Minnesota Wild question in your mind. Ask Brave the Wild and hashtag it. Or, and, and tag it. Hashtag BTWRMan and ask as many questions as you please. Please retweet. Derek says, With Thanksgiving holiday finally here, what are, your most, uh, what are you most thankful about for the Minnesota Wild? For one, I'm thankful for those awesome jerseys. I really am. I'm thankful for the awesome jerseys. Thankful that we're above 500 at the moment. But uh, most thankful right now for this season is probably the awesome jerseys along with the fact that we have Kirill Kaprizov. You know, we have Kirill Kaprizov on the roster and what he can do. Um, so very thankful for that. No doubt about it. If uh, kind of an unexpected thank you, uh, thankful for thing, has got to be... Uh, um, has got to be Mason Shaw in a lot of ways, becoming like a real NHL player. Really thankful that he's able to, you know, get past all those injuries and such. And what a wonderful, uh, what a wonderful story. Jody Anderson responded with <clears throat> the not weird wild commercials, retro jerseys, and we are about to go on a long winning streak. Hopefully, thank you, Jody, and I agree with a lot of that. Those, those uh, not weird, uh, those not weird wild commercials are really fun. Like the moose coming out of the water with the hockey stick as his antlers kind of cool. That was cool. He's coming up out of the lake with a, like a moose, you know, with a seaweed on the antlers. That's funny. Derek Felska says, what do you think should be done with Marco Rossi? Should he stay with the big club or be sent down? Do you buy the fact that he thinks he has little or nothing to learn if he's sent down to Iowa? There is like a combination thing. He does need to go down, like I'm saying, to hit some home runs and get his batting average up. I'm not sure he's really going to learn anything, but maybe kind of get his confidence up again. I think that's all it really is at this point. Get that confidence up. Get the, get him kind of able to feel a little bit of a scoring touch. And then once he has that scoring touch going, like kick some butt in a few games in the AHL, I think he'd come back up and do better. It was kind of similar with Jules Eriksson-Eck years ago, where he'd get like five points in like 30 games or something. He'd gone down to the AHL, and he's a point-plus-a-game player, He'd come back up, and he would be better. That that happened as and as he continued to progress, him being, again, Jewel Erickson X. So it's not about learning. It's about just kind of getting the confidence and the touch. That That's kind of how I see it with Rossi and, again, with uh, Jewel Erickson X at the end of the day. Because, yeah, I don't think it's a whole lot about learning at this stage. He, he Maybe. I mean, he, he will learn. He, there is other things to learn along the way. But I do think it's a confidence thing as well. So hopefully I made the point decently there. Derek uh, says, 
Who do you think becomes the Ironman out with the team training for Ryan Reeves? Marco Rossi. Marco Rossi at the moment. Otherwise, Nick Patan almost for sure, unfortunately, for Nick. Nick Patan when it comes to, like, say, a tough guy in the fourth line. Although, um, Nick Patan actually for now. Um, and then maybe Rossi gets sent down as well. Um, so, next one is, what are your top three moments so far for the Minnesota Wild this season, good or bad? Well, for one, of course, Goligoski getting the game-winning goal. I, you know, it's it's not the, you know, it, I'm not into that cute emotional stuff all the time. Especially, it's not like he played on the Wild for like a decade and he won Stanley Cups or anything. But, um... So, the bad thing was getting shut out 4 nothing versus Seattle at home. That was horse crap. That was horse bleep. Uh, that would be like the pretty much the low point, other than maybe the first couple of games. It was like, what is this? Um, yeah, 7-3 loss to the Rangers. 7-6 to six loss to the Kings. What is this? And of course, of course, Fiala scores. It's starting off 0-3, giving up like, how many goals did we give up? Uh, 20. 20 goals in three games. It's ridiculous. So, but um, I, I think the low point was definitely that 4 nothing demolition to the uh, Seattle Kraken. That was ridiculous. Um, so that's top, that's one of the top three for the, the bad. Okay, so good good or bad. So bad, obviously Seattle is number one, Seattle 4 nothing loss, and the other two are probably, again, losing to the Rangers in the season opener, getting manhandled in the Kings. So it's kind of those even though you could probably add some more. I'm sure, but just an awful start to the season. It's been a little better since then. It hasn't been as, as negative, honestly. That 2-1 to one loss to Detroit wasn't all that fun either, but they're, they're okay. Um, what, what's next? Again, losing to Nashville again, 2-1, to one, ridiculous. Losing to the Sharks, 3-2. to two. You could go on all day. Um... Yeah, I mean, beating Carolina has to be top three. Crushing Winnipeg 6-1, to one, that's top three. So it's like it's a lot of recent. Shutting out Seattle, I think, after they shot us out, that's like a third maybe out of the three for the positives, I would have to say. So we'll move on from there. Cool question there. Which video game, this is Derek one more time, says uh, which video game gives you, or which video game gives one a smorgasbord of awesomeness? It can be for any system or genre. Which video game, huh? Smorgasbord of awesome. It can be for any system or genre. Uh, <sighs> Smorgasbord of awesomeness. <laughs> um, I mean, I love Final Fantasy IV slash two for uh, Super Nintendo. That's an all timer for me. Secret of Evermore, I think, is a is one of the most underrated games of all time, and. Uh, a game that was underrated forever and now people might be overrating a little bit, even though me, I, I loved it back in the day when nobody liked it, and I, so I still love it the same. Earthbound, of course, for Super Nintendo, which is worth a fortune now, but luckily a lot of you may have it on emulators or the SNES Mini in HDMI or whatever. Some people might have Raspberry Pi, which is also HDMI. Um, Smorgasburg of Awesomeness. There's always FF6. I mean, I'm kind of biased. I mean, I... I like the NES more overall for for fun factor, but Super Nintendo's got the best RPGs in my opinion, the best, uh, bar none. Um, I can't really think of just one. Obviously, there's so many fun games. Final uh, Mario Three for the NES, for any system or genre. Um, yeah, that's kind of Brent Lehman. Otherwise, number one out of that group. I mean, you know, you know, I'm very biased with RPGs, but even um, Jumping Flash for the, uh, which is kind of a 3D platform game for the uh, PlayStation in the mid '90s. Jumping Flash is an underrated one. Those were so much fun. Um, those are so much fun. Jay Bushy says. Russo has reported the Wild are looking for a top six forward help. Who do you think they're pursuing? Ryan Reeves, apparently. <laughs> top six, right? No, I'm kidding. As for that, uh, Jody says Malkin. I don't. I don't think so. I think he's too expensive and kind of you know he's he's up there in age. I'm sure. I'm sure uh, Bill Guerin would love to have him. Honestly, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I'm having a hard time really thinking of names at the moment, and my head's kind of weak right now. I, I heard some though. It was a judge, the Zolgad. They were talking about. Uh, 
Judd's Hockey Show. Who were they talking about? There were a couple guys. I just want to see here quick. Yeah, oh yeah, Timo Mayer. Yeah, that sounds kind of unrealistic. Yeah, I remember, and then Anthony Duclair, guys like that. That's what I've heard, um, at least from Judd and Declan. Timo Mayer sounds like, and huge, he has really high end, and I'd love to have him. <laughs> Let me tell you, I would take him in a heartbeat, but what's his salary, that kind of thing. So I may have to jump on, uh, <laughs> may have to jump on salaries a bit, but yeah, Timo Mayer, so far this year, 21 points in 22 games, 12 goals. He's been absolutely great. Uh, but I'm curious about his salary really quick here. So according to uh, Cap Friendly, Timo Mayer, yeah, he's in the final year of his contract, $6 million. Well, there you go, Matt Dumba. There it is. No. <laughs> and he's a restricted free agent uh, with arbitration eligible. So maybe. I mean, he's only 26. Yeah, I mean, I would love that. Logan Coter, boy, they are in for a long one there. And Thomas Hurdle, they signed him for a ton of money for many years, and he's already 29. I would love to have Timo Mayer. That'd probably be my choice if I if I had a choice. Um, mm, mm, mm. I would love that very much. He's not that expensive, is he? So, I mean, it's there's always a possibility. Maybe it'd have to be Dumba and, like, uh, like first first-round pick at the very least. If not more. I mean, Dumba just for the salaries alone. Anyway, to match the salary. And then probably picks, unfortunately, or prospects. Like a, somebody higher end to do it. Because Dumba's not going to do it, generally. It would mostly be a salary cap thing for both teams to get into the, you know, to, to match salaries and such. That's what it would take, I think. So, interesting idea. It depends on how much the Sharks would want. And San Jose's obviously not in, headed in the right direction at the moment. So... Yeah, the salary's not that high. So, good question, Jay. Thank you. That was cool. Um, <laughs> Jody said Malkin. I think he's out of our range, but we'll see. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, I'm not trying to talk bad to anybody, that's for sure. Um, it'd be cool. Yeah, MN Johan says, really, WTF, Reeves? I understand. It's Yeah, I understand. He's 35, so I'm not too excited either. But I guess he's got that big personality, and he's a big guy, and blah, blah, blah. We'll see. Brian Herrera, welcome back to the show. He says, Do you think Dumbo will be traded now that we have acquired another high-energy leader in the locker room and will Felino and Reeves become Bash Brothers? Yeah, they might. They might become the Bash Brothers. That'd be kind of fun. It'd be fun to see those guys play together, maybe centered by Julia Shinek or who knows. It'd be kind of fun to see how that turns out. I wouldn't be surprised if Dumbo gets traded, and I love that he's playing better. I love that he's playing better because it will raise that trade value. Um... <laughs> I don't want him re-signed for like five, six, seven million a year, and I don't think the Wild can do that if we like it or not. Anyway, ah, uh, looks like we're at the last one. Tom Hayen, at least he got one in, and I appreciate Tom Hayen. Yeah, love hearing from Tom Hayen. It's like because I'm always like the lightning round, the lightning round. But no, it's okay. If there's no lightning round, but at least he gets one in. That's great. Tom Hayen says it was 44 years ago today that the turkey drop at the Pinedale Shopping Mall took place. What was the greatest Thanksgiving event? ever. Hashtag BTWMN. Greatest Thanksgiving event ever? Maybe the Vikings crushing the Dallas Cowboys? Uh, well, you know, or Randy Moss catching three balls and running into the end zone three times? Because <laughs> I'm a sports nerd. Because I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I'm not really... Let's just say I'm not really the most cultured person in the world. You know, I don't pay attention to a whole lot of stuff uh, <laughs> all, all the time. But, and I, I don't have a good memory of it right now at the moment. I probably could come up with something, but maybe if something comes to me and I'm like, oh, wow, I'll bring it up on the next episode. But otherwise, Randy Moss catching those three balls in uh, Thanksgiving 1998 and just going all the way to say, screw you for passing on me, basically. Yeah, that was a beautiful day, even though it was a game that took way too long because there was a penalty every 10 seconds. It was the stupidest thing ever. It was just a mess, but at the same time, we beat the, the hated Cowboys who were still super high-end at the time, so that felt great. Um, you beat Dallas, you beat all these good teams that year, and then ultimately, you, yeah, I won't, I won't get into what happened after that. Um, with that said, thank you so much for being a part of this show. I really appreciate each and every one of you. God bless you. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Shout-outs to, of course, MNW Prospects, MNW Prospects and Young Guns, MNW Young Guns. I think it's just called Young Guns. You look them up on Twitter. 
you will have you will see them in the show description. We keep up with the prospects out there in the juniors, the college, uh, overseas, young players on the Minnesota Wild roster, um, in the AHL, and all that cool stuff. So love what they do. Uh, Pavel Bonnet, Merrick Skyba. I'm not sure if he's been a part of it anymore, but is he still around at times? Uh, of course, Brandon Quas, Justin Justin Baki, Chad Walski, myself. Really appreciate being a part of it. Right now, I'm mostly just kind of giving shout outs at the moment, but I, I probably should <laughs> try to, and, and I try to, and I keep up with the prospects all the time, of course, on this show as well. But, um, um, but those those guys do a lot of great writing and really appreciate what they do. So I have to give them a major shout out. Uh, Minnesota Wild Global, huge shout out, of course. And uh, the Hockey Podcast Network, thank you so much for having me. And of course, get your DraftKings Sportsbook app. Very, very fun indeed. With that said, have a wonderful, happy Thanksgiving. Maybe consider calling into the show or just keep commenting away. And if you could write a positive rating on Apple Podcasts, iTunes, whatever they call it, or any of the other apps that allow you to do that, would really, really appreciate that. It helps the show in a big way. And thank you for those of you that share the show on Twitter and Facebook and other places. God bless all of you, and talk to you in a week. Thank you.